Hello and welcome everyone to another Incarnate Livestream. Today we're going to be showing you tips and tricks on how to make traps. That means where do you find the traps in the catalog? What are they? How do I put together more complex traps? How to put things together? Where to put them on your maps? All that stuff we're going to be covering in today's live stream. So stick around for that. You're going to want to clone and edit this map if you want to follow along in today's stream. You'll find that link in the chat if you're watching live. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll find that in the video description. All right, let's get cracking. First, we'll go ahead and remove this title. Let's go ahead and zoom in. First, what is a trap? A trap is basically a mechanism that's going to either ensnare your player, cause them damage, it could do both, keeps one of them from moving, advancing forward. It's basically a way of stopping player movement, and it can also be used against your enemies. So we'll be covering all of that in the stream. Let's go to that first panel here, and we're going to go into a cavern setting. And let's just go into the catalog, and we're going to look for some traps. So if you open up the catalog and you type in trap, what will happen is, is that all the trap-like stamps uh, in within the catalog will, will pop up. But I want you to scroll specifically down because there's an entire pack called traps. Let's focus on using those. And in fact, I'll go up to the top here, click that hamburger menu, and click expand all assets. And this way we can get a better look of all the different types of trap stamps that there is. And you'll notice that there's gears, there's chains, all those things are there to help to make the mechanisms that you want for your traps. And I can, can't stress to you that it's actually important to show the mechanism, showing gears and things like that. It makes it both more realistic and it sends a clear message to your player that this probably is some kind of mechanism or a trap. So it's important to do that. So let's go ahead and get out of that catalog. We'll go into that first panel in the cavern like we did before. Just press that escape key, it'll take you right back. So if you're in the catalog and you want to go back to the editor, escape button takes you right back. As always, whenever I'm building a map or putting traps on it or whatever I'm doing, I like to turn the grid on. The grid is extremely useful. Notice that I've got some things lined up with the grid and that's really helpful for movement. It also helps to align up traps. So if a player steps on a trap, um, it will be triggered. So it's good to be sure to throw that grid on. And now the most basic trap is one where the player can't see and they step on the wrong space or wrong area and it triggers the trap. And the most normal one is just like a spike set or whatever and it just causes some minimal damage or it slows down the player by either ensnaring them or it damages them also slowing down their movement. Let's go with the most basic traps that you'll find in the catalog, which is a spiked pits. And notice that I placed them on the where specifically on spaces. And the reason why you would want to show a trap, you're probably wondering, well, why am I showing a trap on the map? That doesn't make any sense. Showing a trap means that players can avoid it. Well, if you're going to add traps and you're going to make them visible, they're great to use to also ensnare or damage your enemies. For a lot of encounter maps, when there's traps, there's usually some enemies running around as well. And so it's really helpful to make them visible. So let's say that a monster is right here. You can combat kick them or this is Sparta kick them into that spike pit, right? And then they'll get damaged or they'll get ensnared in the trap. So that is why you would want to make a trap visible on the encounter map so that players can actually use the traps to their advantage. But just know that if you can see them, so can the enemy and the enemy can combat you kick you into the pit or the trap or whatever it might is. So always remember that they don't always have to be invisible. You can totally place place them on the map, make them visible, and then it can become a part of a tactic in your encounter, making the, dy the encounter more dynamic. Instead of just you walk up, slash, walk away, another person slashes, uses a spell, whatever it might be, throwing in traps adds an extra element. That's called like environmental damage. It's great to have traps like that. Let's go ahead and keep going with some more types of traps. There's also a, what's called a rotating trap. And I'll show you how this works and how to uh, play it as a DM. If you zoom in carefully, you'll notice that I've, in the center of the space, I've added some of these spikes that are on some wood tied together with some rope. This is great. 
And I want you to notice that there is one spike that is missing right here on this side. There's no spike on this side. And what you as a DM would is explain to the players that this thing is rotating every single turn. Every single time a player does one turn, this thing is going to end up spiking, rotating, and it's going to be able to allow players to go into the empty space to get around the trap. Okay, though they're easy to assemble, that piece, that wooden stool, that wooden piece right there is a stool. There's a gear behind it. I've added the gear so that it makes it clear that it rotates. Why else would you have a gear there unless it's meant to move? So the gear makes it rotate. And then you have those spiked clubs or sticks right there with the spikes on the end. So remember, every time after one player finishes a move, rotate it. And then when another player does a move, rotate it. And you don't have to do that until the player actually comes upon the trap. But it's an easy and simple way to throw in a trap that requires timing. And it's easy to put in. And it's kind of fun. Allows players some timing. Allows one player to move forward. You can also attack the trap. Try to break it down. Maybe you have a barbarian. They go berserk. Boom. Breaks the trap. Whatever. It's up to you. There's one more. There's a couple more traps we'll throw in. Um, there's one I call the running saw trap. Pretty easy to make. You're just going to take any wall of your choice and just bring the brightness all the way down to zero on the color options. It's just going to be in your advanced options. Let me give you an example so you can see it for yourself. Like if I click this right here and I go scroll down and you'll see that there's these advanced settings and then go to color in the center and then drop the brightness all the way down to zero. And it's going to make it completely black. That's how I made the tracks. Notice that the track also spans across three panels. So the effect area is those three panels when you walk on it, okay? And what same thing with that rotating trap, each turn the blade moves over one space. And what I like to do is have one go one way and then one have one go another way, just for fun. That way it makes it kind of more challenging. Oopsie. <laughs> you know what I mean. Top one goes to the right, bottom one goes to the left. They're easy to put together. Just that buzz saw or that saw, it's called a floor saw. Just put that right in the center and it, that way it looks like there's a track that it follows. The last one is throwing in bear traps and bear traps are great. They serve many functions. They can slow a player down. They can slow an enemy down, whoever gets ensnared in it. And it can cause some extra damage. For instance, if there's some combat going on top of this rock right here, and you push an enemy combatant, not also will they get fall damage, but they'll also get ensnared in the trap, causing even more damage depending on where they land. Maybe you hit roll 20. Maybe you hit a high attack. They land on their head. Boom. There goes their head from the bear trap, or they're going to die slowly. Right, so throwing in bear traps, again, useful for throwing, for slowing your enemies down, slowing, let's say your enemy kicks you into one, it's gonna slow you down. It can add for extra damage. I love putting it on fall spaces where a player falls off or an enemy falls off. That way it gives this extra sense of tension and danger when you fall. It's not just you fall off and you just get back up and go back down. When you fall, you're gonna land on something that's really gonna hurt. So bear traps, absolutely useful. Totally recommend using them on any map. So there is for your caverns. Let's go move into more of a wooded space. And there's only a couple traps on this one, but I'll show you what, let's say that you have a forest, a forest path, even a mountain path with some trees. This next traps kind of requires trees. So it's kind of important to have that. If you look in the catalog, you'll see that there are these pits right here. And you can kind of tell that it's a pit. It's got some leaves and it's kind of dark below. It's using contrast to make it look like there's something deep there. So that is a fall, a pit that people can fall in. And I've put it, put several on the map. Again, you're using them. They're visible because you want to one, be able to avoid them, maybe use them to your advantage to kick an enemy, maybe they fall over the log and then fall into the pit. They lose balance, fall into the pit. Or maybe you pick up a log and you throw it at them and then they fall into the pit, right? So whichever, those things are really helpful. You'll find them in tr in the trap section in the catalog. Just type in trap. You'll find them there. 
And of course, you can also throw in, I love throwing in my bear traps, especially in a wooded area. They're good to have. They're going to slow enemies down and they are just, uh, they're fun. You could even grab one, take one with you, use it for hunting, use it to um, create an ambush for enemies. So the bear traps lying around, they're great. You can pick one up and use it in the campaign. Play Any player can pick one up or perhaps there's a certain class that requires or has more knowledge with traps, whatever it might be. Bear traps are fantastic. Totally recommend using them. There is also another trap that's pretty popular and you see a lot in films and in games and that is a net trap that's attached to a tree. You know, you watch a film or you play a game and you get caught in a trap and it whew, you get caught in the net and then you get thrown up into into the tree where you're caught and I'll show you how to put together this kind of trap because these kind of traps require a tree. Otherwise, it doesn't make much sense to have a net on the ground and there's no ropes or anything that activates the trap. So the way that I go about doing that is you see these green trees right here. Just so just grab one from the catalog. Go like I said to the color options, make it all the way brightness to zero and then drop the opacity. I usually have it around 25% or 30%. I just want to make sure that um, you can see the shadow because what I'm using is I'm using the stamp as the shadow of the tree and then look carefully I took a stump and then I took a black path I turned off the shadow just used a pure black path and then put it over part of the top part of the stump so that it looks like it's not like it's just there and then the tree on top of it and then of course you see the net right here <coughs> excuse me so there's the net right here and it is kind of hard to see I did that on purpose I kind of wanted the tree to kind of obfuscate or to kind of make it look like it's faded out a little bit or it's hidden in the shadow i am done that on purpose I want players to have a difficult time seeing it maybe it's too late or whatever or you can use even use it to entrap enemies if you want so that kind of trap is really helpful, easy to make. You just need to make the tree that includes the stump, the black uh, path to put over the stump, and the tree. And that's pretty easy. You can also use uh, vines. For instance, like these are perhaps these vines right here are living and you can they can attack you, they can trap you, hold on to you, whatever. Maybe they're not strong enough to strangulate you, maybe they are. So using natural environment can also act as a trap so grasping vines that kind of grab at your players legs drag them into the trees make or throw them into a pit or throw them into a trap all those things are really nice the natural environment can act as a trap itself let's talk about more complex traps ones that let's say an entire encounter is the trap or the entire map is a trap and this is like one that I really like. It's popular in games, it's popular in movies, but it's a sand trap. Basically, when your players walk into this room, so it's going to work for a desert setting. When your players walk into a room, the door shuts behind them and spikes come out and there's no way of getting out. And then these statues start pouring sand, filling into the room. So now you're trapped in a room with sand being filled up and you need to find a way to escape. Now up high at the very top of the thing is a kind of scaffolding and it's got some poles there, but it's too high up for your players to reach. Okay. And when it's too, when it's too hard to reach, then that means you have to use the sand to your advantage, use the sand to your advantage to get up there. What I normally do when I have a room like this where all it's doing is just filling up with sand, what I like to do is to have in some enemies, maybe having in some scorpions, maybe have a rock or a howler or have some monsters that are floating around. And the way that I usually have this is after every player has done a turn, I'll say the room has filled up with maybe a foot of sand. And then after every rotation of all the players and all the enemies, another foot, another foot, another foot. So, and what that does is it allows the players not just to wait for the room to fill up with the sand and then to reach the top, but it allows for players to engage in combat. Maybe they'll get some treasure from looting 
the monsters that they've destroyed or enemies that are within, but also there's the danger. As each foot goes up, it, what I like to do is to drop the movement availability or the power of players to move down a little bit every single foot that gets added, making movement more difficult. And the longer that you take defeating enemies, the more difficult it takes to move. So adding in that challenge makes it a lot easier. So that's the way that I pretty much go about doing traps like that. You could do it with dirt. You could do it with water. There's a lot of different ways that you could do an entire room that's a trap. This sand could be water. And the challenge is now you have to try to survive the water. Maybe there's enemies in the water. Maybe you're at a disadvantage because you're swimming. And maybe you have to find something in there to float on, whatever. So a trap that takes up the entire room is a great way to kind of make it kind of tense throwing in the monsters to make it more difficult. All those things are really, really helpful. I definitely recommend them. Okay. All right. Well, we're almost done here. We're going to do one more, one more panel here. We're going to do a jungle style, a kind of a Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones style trap where you're trying to avoid uh, boulders. And then they're about five feet wide. They're pretty heavy. And we're going to show you how I go about doing that. And I'll add in additional traps on top of the boulder trap because I really enjoy these kind of traps. It's a lot of fun to uh, get players to cooperate, run real quickly to get away from things. So let's go in and first describe the main part of the trap. And that is, is there is a mechanism here at the top. And you'll notice that I've added the gears. Okay, adding in the gears tries to explain what the mechanism does. Notice here that I've removed any railing. So a ball can be pushed, can be pushed off and then it goes down. And the way that I've kind of created this kind of a grat, like it's kind of a ramp that goes down gradually is by making this top wooden thing lighter and then creating a, a gradient where it's dark darkest to lightest so that means this is the top of the ramp this is the bottom of the ramp that's how you do it you use the brightness setting and the color adjustments in the advanced settings to show depth so the ball is, is going to fall down right here let's first show where your players are your players are going to walk in this way this will give your players some space before the ball falls and what my recommendation is, is don't activate the trap right away and you could throw something on the floor like a pressure plate or a panel that activates it and i would do it somewhere around right about here so your players can see the ball coming whoever's right here can see the ball coming and then that way your players have time to react to the ball whether it's jump back at the beginning run forward and try to escape it just like i did with the other traps i usually have the ball move about two or three spaces that's about 10 to 15 feet every single time or one or five feet it's up to you to decide but usually after one turn just one player i'll move it five feet or if after an entire turn on um, of all the players um, cycle of turns i'll maybe make it move 20 feet whatever it might be it's up to you to decide how to go about that now if you're going to have that kind of trap where the ball is going to go down you need to have spaces on the side for players to avoid the ball because they're not going to be able to keep up with the speed of the ball the ball will get to them and it will damage them the ball doesn't have to kill you but it can hurt you right whoever gets hit with that ball is going to take some damage so it's good to get out of the way so you have to create alcoves little spaces for players to get into and you have to create enough room so all the players can fit into it so they, they can escape the ball, all right? And the way that I'm also having it too is just to show that there's a slope. I keep adding more of these little ramps and maybe the ball speeds up. You can increase when the ball gets to this space right here. You could say that the ball's speed increases. It's up to you if you want to add that. It just depends how much time you want to put into prep, how much how, how uh, receptive are your players to the trap, to the, to the encounter. You have to decide that for yourself, okay? So again, let's continue always having some spaces for players to go to try to escape the ball. And what will happen is, is that 
You can also have multiple balls. I see I have four here, but you could have as many as you want. So even if a ball passes the players, if the players are in here, and then the ball passes them, another ball can be activated. So you're constantly in play, but trying to avoid the boulders that take damage or kill you. You can put some spikes on the ball. Maybe it kills a player. Maybe it just does a lot of damage. Maybe it just gets in the way, right? So it's up to you to decide on that. And of course, I like to add in rewards. Players want to feel like they accomplished something. So as they go down the corridor and keep escaping the ball, I throw in some treasure chests because a reward is what you should do when a player does does something great, that they're progressing along in the encounter, they've avoided the traps, they need to be rewarded. Reward them with treasure, equipment, maybe even throw in equipment that helps them to freeze the ball from attacking them. Maybe the, the equipment uh, helps them to increase their speed so that that way they can get, get away from the ball quicker. Whatever it might be, usually the treasure is involved somehow in the encounter, making it easy for players to do what they're doing. All right, so I'll just keep, so the ball's gonna go all the way down and at the end here, you're gonna notice that there's a pit, so players have to jump across and get to where the treasure is and then there'll be an exit there as well. So I like to add a little jump at the end, it's a little dramatic finale where each player is jumping across, trying to make sure that the ball doesn't get to them. Let's throw in some extra traps and then we'll call it good, okay? Let's go ahead and show the, the first trap. Let me, there's a couple of them in here. We'll throw a couple in here. Let's do the first one, um, a falling weight trap. The way that I go about that is if you want to show that there is a trap and you want a weight to come down and crush an enemy or maybe it injures one of your players, I like to throw a little bit of a explosion mark. This will kind of show that there's been an impact and I put a little bit of blood there to show that there's damage there. So when players walk on that space or see that space, they're going to say, oh, that looks a little sus. That's sussy. So be careful. So and that way, when your players see that, they won't walk onto it and get crushed. Or if a player feels rather risky, they might step on it and then a weight will fall down or like a pressure plate and will hit them. So that's how you do like falling traps. If you just don't want the player to see it and it's just by chance they step on that and the weight falls down and there's no warning, you can do that too. But I like to generally throw in um, some blood or find a way for players to avoid traps. Players feel kind of embarrassed and kind of dumb when they land on a trap that they can't see, they can't avoid, it does them damage. You can totally throw those in there, but allowing a player to feel like, hey, I've found, I've used perception i see a trap i'm telling the other players to avoid it that feels good for that player so throwing in um, traps that people can see throws in a little extra there let's go throw in another trap in this same one let's throw in a couple of them let's see here let's do a spinning scythe trap these are all traps that i'm using from the trap pack in the catalog and what's so this one basically rotates you can make it a little bit bigger too if you want it to go into the other spaces let me turn the space on the grid on so you can kind of see the effect so it was about this big before so with this one players can it's spinning and maybe it gets bigger maybe it gets smaller but trying to avoid it maybe there's some monsters inside of here and you push them onto the blade or maybe the blade has a track and it rotates and also goes down this track around like this, or maybe it follows this kind of a track going this way. Just remember you can have it move in each player turn. So having that little, I've used a stool underneath, and then I've used, you can use a, um, a gear as well, but this is just an extra thing to make it difficult for players or for your enemies. And of course, if you have a trap, add a little bit of a reward, that treasure chest. Let's keep going. There's a, there's a couple more traps that I want to add and then we'll call it good. Let's throw in a couple more. Let's throw in a swinging scythe or let's do a pendulum. Let's do a pendulum. Let's add them on here. Okay. So a pendulum trap, not complex. If players maybe find a key and they're able to get into this hallway, hallways 
where they're only five feet wide is a great place to add traps, right? Because the space is limited, there's less chance to avoid it. The way that pendulum traps work is that they work in a pendulum motion, motion, right? You don't have to throw the pendulum if you show the pendulum blade if you don't want to. That's entirely up to you. Maybe you want them to be invisible. Maybe you want them to be there. That's up to you, right? But if they're pretty simple, after every player's turn, they move one space. So the way that I have it is they might start here, one turn, start here, start here, start here, start here, and then here like this. And I've added in that little black space right here because it's meant to show that, hey, there's a space there for the pendulum, that scythe, to pass through. So when you're working on your traps, it's always good to throw in some extra details. So that way it just gives it an extra believability. It makes it more fun. Scythe traps, super easy to make. Just make sure that you put them in a space that's hard to avoid for your players. So they have to dash forward and escape these two blades. Like you could say that one blade is on this side, another one is on this side. And before it moves, players have to dash forward before they, they come back into the center again and slice your player in half or hurt them or whatever it might be. So it's always good to throw in like a scythe trap. Those make it a lot more fun, okay? Let's throw in our last trap and then we'll call it good. The last one is gonna be a, um, a swinging scythe. And a swinging scythe basically is going to affect multiple panels. So let's sh show you the radius on this one. It's gonna look like this. So it's rotating like that, or you could have it go through the entire wall so that it actually, there's a space here in the wall, so it rotates. So the only way to avoid it is when the scythe is right inside of there and your players can quickly get by to avoid it. And I usually, again, sync up the scythe so that that way, when one side is in the wall, one is out, and then you have to move with the timing to escape the side. All these traps just make it more fun. It gives it more challenge. Players like it when you throw in more than just combat. They like some stimulation, throwing in traps and making them feel like they accomplished something by avoiding the trap. All those things are really, really make traps more fun. It's more than just a, oops, you stepped on the wrong panel, ouch bad you for stepping on that panel, right? It's throwing in an extra level of, of tactic, trying to avoid things, reward and punishment, feeling like there's accomplishment. All those things are really helpful. Now there's a lot of different ways to make traps, but I can again say that the best places to put little traps are gonna be small spaces where they can't avoid, or you can make an entire encounter one massive trap like the this, Desert one, it's a whole, the whole encounter is a trap. That jungle ball trap, the entire encounter is a trap. And it just makes it more fun to do that, okay? Now, that's really it for the stream. There's a thousand different ways that you can do uh, traps, but I totally encourage you to watch your favorite adventure movies, watch, play video games, uh, see how other player, other DMs have incorporated traps. All these things are acceptable. Be creative. If you have a hard time with them, just do something simple. Throw in some bear traps. Throw in some pits. It can be as simple or as complex as you want it. It just depends on you as a DM, how well you know your players, how well do they work together in more complex traps or puzzles or whatever. It's about knowing your players, what they like, what they don't like. So just take the time to do the research for the traps, see what works best, and there's a lot of different ways. There's all different themes of traps that you can choose from. So be creative, have fun, give your players a sense of challenge, make them feel like they've accomplished something and have fun with it because I think that's the whole point. Now, if you, of course, if you like any one of these um, little panels that you would wanna use for yourself, you can totally just go to the grid, just go to resize map and just resize it like this. And that way you can, actually make it an entire encounter and you can use that map for yourself. If you don't know where that, <clears throat> where to find the link to this uh, map so you can clone and edit, just look, scroll up in my chat and in the chat and you'll, <coughs> you'll find that link at the top because you can make any one of these 
into an encounter map that you can edit and use for your players. All right, well, hey, that is it. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope that you found uh, the traps useful. I believe the next stream is gonna be uh, how to do, or tips and tricks on interiors. The focus is gonna be on lighting. It's gonna be on uh, details and how overall to set up a room, the form and function of rooms or interiors. How do you do that? Some players get really confused with interiors, so that will be helpful. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you all. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again in, in two weeks for the next stream. Please stay safe and healthy and merry map making. Take it easy, everybody.